Hi, I'm Dr. Schaffstall, and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through and show you some of the equipment that we have in our human performance lab, talk a little bit about how we can utilize that equipment in a research project. Most of this equipment you'll be getting trained on throughout the course of the semester, uh, but there could be some specialized pieces that if you want to utilize in a research project, we can show you how to uh, use that and how to best implement it when working with clients or when working with uh, participants in a study. So here we go. All right, so the first thing we have is a Lang skinfold caliper. Now, Lang skinfold calipers are kind of a staple in as, as far as skinfold calipers go. You'll find these in most uh, human performance labs. Uh, you may find some others as well, but this is one that you'll typically see most often. It has the caliper itself, and also in this picture here, you can see a calibration block. Now, a calibration block is it's not used to actually calibrate the block, but it's used to tell if the, if the calipers are calibrated. If you look at the short steps, these are five millimeter steps. And if you turn the block sideways, these are 10 millimeter steps. So you'll be able to uh, use that block to see if it's accurately measuring prior to uh, testing somebody. Also, uh, the nice thing about this these calipers are, you can really take them anywhere. And if we were testing athletes or a client out in the field or in their home training environment, we can easily transport this there and utilize that. So these run about $250 to $300. Typically, we wouldn't use them for research uh, because they do have a fair amount of human error involved with them. But we can uh, use them if we aren't able to uh, get any more uh, devices that have better accuracy. Next, we have the BOD pod. Now, the BOD pod uses a system that's called whole body plethysmography. So the person will sit inside it, and the system will change pressure within the chamber. And based on these pressure changes, it will determine how much space the person takes up and how much. Uh, volume they utilize. So because we know the volume and we've already measured their weight, we can calculate their body density and from that get the uh, amount of fat mass and fat free mass. Now these are rather expensive. Typically these are in the neighborhood of about $50,000. So much more expensive than some of the other methods that we're going to be utilizing. Wrong way. All right, next we have our hydrostatic weighing tank, and this is also known as underwater weighing. The client will go into the water, and we've already measured their weight, and we're, we're estimating their lung capacity. They'll go into the water, they'll submerge, they'll exhale all their air, and they're holding on to the platform, as you can see in the picture, and we'll measure their weight underwater after they've fully exhaled all their air. Now this system uh, for many years was considered to be the gold standard in body composition testing. It's one of the first original methods that was utilized. Uh, this system here will cost in the neighborhood about $15,000, which includes the, uh, the tank, the weighing system, and the uh, computer that goes along with that. And from this, we can calculate their percent body fat and fat-free mass. Next, we have the InBody 770. Now, the InBody 770 uses what's called bioelectrical impedance. So basically, it's shooting low-level electricity through the body. The person will stand on the platform, and the electrodes on the platform here will conduct electricity through the feet. And they have these handles, which they'll use at, at the top. They'll hold those at arm's length, and they'll send electricity through the body several different pathways, hand-to-hand, -hand, foot to foot hand to foot, and it'll do cross the body, hand to foot as well. And it'll also send several different frequencies of electricity through the body. So from this, it's able to calculate fat mass, fat free mass, and the amount of weight that's made up of water. It can also tell you how much of that water weight is intracellular or extracellular water. This will give you a segmental comparison as well. 
looking at right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, and the torso. And it'll give us a breakdown of each one of those areas. This system here, uh, I think it's in the neighborhood of about $25,000 to $27,000. They do have other systems that are less expensive. Uh, but this one uses a, uh, a lot of the higher end uh, technology. Next, we have the Hologic DEXA system, dual energy X ray absorptometry. This is a, an X ray table, and you notice the person's lying on the table, and they have this, what's called C arm. This will go back and forth across the, the person, and it's going to do scans using two different levels of X rays. And from this, we get the fat mass, fat free mass. We also get the bone mineral density and the amount of bone mass the person has. So we get a little more information. Once again, it can break it down segmentally, right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, torso for the body composition. And then for the uh, bone density, it'll tell you segmentally, and then it'll break it down even further, right ribs, left ribs, thoracic, lumbar spine as well. This system here is a, it's one of your high-end uh, models. This is about a $220,000 system. Uh, this isn't something that the students will learn how to use in class. Uh, but we do have faculty that have patch special training in its utilization. Next, we have the SICA scale and steadyometer, typical what we call a doctor's office scale. I think most doctor's offices even use scales like this now. But it's a typical balance scale, and a steadyometer is used to measure the height of the individual. We also have a couple of freestanding steadyometers in the lab as well, which you utilize to measure height. So it's a uh, good device for that. This is a, an altitude chamber. It's actually our older altitude chamber that we had, had in our previous lab. Uh, the, our current altitude chamber has about double the internal capacity. So our current altitude chamber, we can simulate altitudes up to about 20,000 feet of elevation. And during that time, we can have the person either at rest, they could be exercising, we can have them on a bike, a treadmill, a uh, row machine, skier, anything of that nature, anything we fit inside the door of the, of the chamber, we can have them uh, train on or test on with that. As I said, we can go up to 20,000 feet. And our chamber is what's called a normal barrack hypoxic chamber. It means we have normal pressures in the chamber. We don't change the, the air pressure, but we do change the oxygen concentration. It's called hypobaric, or excuse me, hypoxic. It is a normal barrack hypoxic condition. Uh, the chamber we have is about $130,000 and it's ran uh, by a computer. We just kind of plug in what we want to have it set for as far as the altitude and it'll make the adjustments on the hypoxic air generators to give us the uh, dialed in altitude. This is an example of a hypoxic air generator. The chamber that we have actually uses 12 of these. Uh, we have five additional freestanding hypoxic air generators. These particular ones by higher peak, we can run the hose to a mask and directly feed the individual different levels of oxygen. So we can test them outside the chamber. If we have a piece of equipment that won't fit in the chamber or something specialized we want to have them do. Uh, for example, we were working with some aviation students and we took one of these and a mask system over to the flight simulators. And so they were in an actual flight simulator, which just looks like the inside of an actual airplane. And we had them utilize different oxygen concentration to see how that impacted their, their flight and reaction times. With these, we can also go up to 20,000 feet. And I believe we have two of these systems that will go up to 24,000 feet. This is our high-speed treadmill. This treadmill will go up to 31 miles an hour and a 40% incline. And because of that high speed, we always, will, always want to look out for safety. So we have this overhead harness system that will strap into the person. And so that way, if they fall, that system will uh, support them over top the treadmill. So we can do uh, high speed training, over speed training. Uh, we used it for research studies doing uh, different hiking applications because the belt's big enough that we have the person using trekking poles on the belt. Uh, this system the treadmill and the overhead harness system, looking at about $35,000 for that system. We got several of the TrackMaster treadmills. We have 10 of these in the lab. 
Uh, these are kind of the standard uh, treadmills you see in most human performance labs. Uh, these will go up to, I believe, 12 miles an hour, 25% incline. We use these for a number of aerobic and anaerobic sort of tests. With uh, these treadmills, you said, Pretty pretty standard. They run in neighborhood of about probably about eight thousand dollars each uh, for those now. Uh, the kind of heavy duty, not your typical treadmill that you see in a home gym, definitely commercial grade. This is a, a techno gym skill mill, also called a curved treadmill. It's a motorless treadmill, so the person can run on it uh, without using the motor. Nice thing I like about this is we can quickly do sprint activities with this. We can go from a walk to a jog to a sprint very fast. So it's good for doing repeat bouts of sprints. Also very low impact because of the curvature of the treadmill. Uh, this, this one does have a handle up here, which we can use to adjust the tension. So we can add more tension or less tension. For more tension, we can also hold on to the handrails at the front or lean way in, kind of like you're doing a sled pull. I believe this treadmill kind of runs in the neighborhood of about $10,000. This is a Velotron cycle ergometer, and this, uh, this bike is plugged into a computer, and it's electronically braked in the back. We can set this up. Uh, we've got quite a bit of adjustments we can do. We can raise and lower the seat. Seat can also go forward and back. Same with the handlebars, up and down, forward and back, to get a custom adjustment for the individual on the bike. Uh, we can also have them set up to where they can clip into the pedals using their cycling shoes, or we can flip the pedals over and just have a, a little more robust uh, cage for the feet. Uh, depending on what we're doing, we can program the, uh, the cycle to go off the person's actual bicycle setup. Meaning, if they have so many sprockets with so many teeth in the back and the same for the front, you can tell the computer what their setup is and it will mimic that resistance setting for each one of those sprocket setups. We can also program the software to uh, mimic uh, hills and declines, headwinds and tailwinds that they might encounter when riding an actual course, and it will adjust the uh, tension accordingly. We'll do a lot of our anaerobic test utilizing this bike, but we can also set it up for aerobic tests as well. This is our Monarch 828E. This is kind of our, one of our workhorses in the lab. Uh, this bike, you're looking at about $3,000 cost, and a very standard setup. It has a, uh, a dial here where we can adjust the tension, and that tension is mo monitored here on the uh, pendulum, and it's measured in either kilograms or kilopons, uh, depending on, it's really the same thing. Uh, kilopons refers to it's using a uh, pendulum to uh, create the tension with that, and we use this a lot for warm-ups and a lot of our sub-maximal tests. This is a watt bike and the watt bike uh, we can use this for testing. It's it's really nice setup for a uh, for a Wingate 30 second test, also a five second uh, maximal power test and uh, can have quite a bit of adjustment with the seat forward and back up and down, same with the handlebars and same thing with the pedals. We, we can clip them in with this as well with cycling shoes. Uh, it is nice to get warm-ups on. We only got one of these in the lab uh, just because we don't use this uh, widespread. Uh, it's more of a novelty type piece. This is our Monarch upper body ergometer. Now a person with this they will hand crank this and this is a this is more of a rehab type model. We would use this more for a steady state type training or for uh, low-level submaximal training, uh, Monarch does make a more uh, robust system for maximal testing. Uh, this is more uh, submaximal. This is the Concept Step Two Cycle Ergometer, or Concept Two Rowing Ergometer. And with this, the person will be on the uh, rowing machine. It can measure power output and calories, uh, wattage. That they're creating. We can do uh, aerobic tests with this uh, using either calculations that come off the VO2 max or we can measure the VO2 max directly using a spirometry system. 
We also have a Concept2 skier, and this is simulating cross-country skiing for the individual. They grab hold of the uh, handles at the top and they're pulling down. Once again, we can uh, use this in conjunction with a VO2 system, or we can do testing standalone alone with this. Uh, the system, we have, we have two of these, they can be hooked uh, together. So we can run two tests side by side and kind of see where the person is that they're competing against. On a side note, my son Toby holds the American records for the 13 and 14 year old age group on the uh, ski erg for both the 100 meter and the one minute time trial. I used to have the American record for my age group, but it was recently broken for the 100 meter test. Now we have an Eden 1200. We use this for resting ECGs. So we get an accurate heart rate. We have 12 electrodes hooked up to the person's chest. It's going to be monitoring the heart activities. Not only are we getting a heart rate, we're also getting a, a good profile. If there's anything uh, coming up, such as some sort of air or some sort of uh, heart dysfunction. We also have two of the Eden SE12s. This is part of a stress test system. These computers are hooked up to the uh, treadmills. So when we're doing a stress test, we have the 12 lead ECG hooked up. The uh, computer system ECG is running the treadmill and we get an accurate test. They'll print out one uh, page for each stage of the uh, test. So you'll get multiple looks on how the person's heart is functioning as the test is progressing. Got several of the Spiro Bank 2 spirometers. With this, we're looking at lung capacity. So we can measure the person's forced vital capacity, the FBC, seeing how much air they can blow out after full inhalation. We can also look at how fast that air comes out, uh, looking at the uh, peak expiratory flow and the forced expiratory volume sub one, which is the amount of air that comes out in the first second of a full, for, full for, forceful exhalation. We use these more for gathering data uh, as opposed to that, doing actual research studies in the lab. And typically these are about four to $500 each. We do have a Lactate Plus Lactate Analyzer. And with this, it works very similar to a glucose monitor. So you prick the person's finger, get a drop of blood, touch it to the, uh, the end of the strip, and it'll tell us what their lactate levels are. This is good for doing high intensity uh, tests, kind of like a Wingate bike test or an anaerobic treadmill test. See how those lactate levels change, rise uh, with the uh, onset of high intensity activity. This is one of our two types of VO2 systems we have in the lab. It's an Oxycon Mobile VO2 system. And with this system, the person actually wears most of the electronics associated with this. And they're wearing the electronics, they're wearing the headgear, there's a uh, home base here that it's uh, sending the information back to. And so the nice thing about this system is we can test them on different apparatuses or in different environments than we normally could because they're not tethered to the computer. We could have them running outside, running upstairs, uh, wearing this system, and we would continue to get the information sent back to the home base. This is our Parvo True One metabolic system. We actually have four of these in our lab. Now uh, with this, we will be measuring their VO2, looking at oxygen consumption, CO2 production. Uh, typically, we're going to test them on a treadmill or a bike. Now, we could also test them on the row machine or the ski erg as well. Uh, with this, they are limited to the uh, size of the tube, the length of the tube as far as uh, where they can test. Uh, but it's a kind of a, uh, one of those workhorse pieces of equipment. Uh, it's highly utilized around the country. Uh, most of our Olympic training centers have some of these in their facilities that they're utilizing uh, to test our Olympic athletes as well. And it's very user friendly. Students can uh, learn how to use this quickly and then easily get the uh, feedback information we need from the client. This is our Smedley 3 hand dynamometer, and this is used to measure grip strength. And one of the things I like about this one, it has a knob here that we can adjust the uh, length of the grip here, so some of us longer hands, bigger hands, we can 
widen that. Some of the smaller hands, we can uh, shorten that for them. And depending on the system you get, you can measure nine pounds or kilograms for their grip strength. It's easy to set, uh, quick to utilize. This is our leg and back dynamometer. Uh, essentially, when we're doing using this, we're doing an isometric deadlift, and we can lengthen or shorten this chain depending on how high or how short we want them to be lifting from. And once again, it's going to be giving us the results on either pounds or kilograms, depending on which exact model you're utilizing. We do have kettlebells, weights, power rack in the lab. This is for measuring strength. All the plates we have are the Ivanko uh, calibrated weights. So these are basic competition legal plates and very precise in the uh, measurement of the weight. So we can do uh, squats, we can do deadlifts, we can do bench presses, anything of that nature in the lab. We also have a set of uh, bumper plates if we we're doing uh, power cleans or something like that. This is a Pro Vib Vibration Training Platform. With this platform, uh, we can change the amplitude and frequency of vibration. So the person can be doing either uh, body weight exercises or they can uh, be loading the exercises. We can set this up. We can have a bench on it. We can do squats. We can do deadlifts on it. The platform will support up to 1,200 pounds. And so we can add the vibration, so an unstable surface to the training. Next, we have the jump mat. Now, this mat, when you jump, it starts a timer and basically times how long you're in the air. And from that, you can calculate how high you jumped. So it's a uh, good device to be able to get uh, the vertical jump quickly measured with individuals. Also in the lab, we have the uh, Vertec vertical jump tester. Now with this, the person jumps up, they hit these feathers or veins up here, and we can measure their vertical jump height. We can also look at their total vertical displacement, seeing how high can they get their hands up in the air. And sometimes, you know, why we want to measure that? Well, if you're looking for people to come on to a field goal blocking team, you want to see how high they can actually get their hands up in the air, not just how high they can jump. And lastly, we have our Brower timing system. Now with this system, it uses little laser beams and we can use those to start and stop the timer. And we can have the laser beam set up at different lengths from the starting area. So if we want to see what their 10 meter time was, what your 40 meter time was. We can also set it up uh, with different uh, start starting methods. So we can use the touch pad here. So when their hand releases from the touch pad, the timer starts. We can use a sound source as a microphone, and the sound source can go on a whistle or like a starter's pistol. And then we can also go uh, manually where you just touch the button and it'll start the timer. Or we can have it where when, when you break the first set of laser lights, the timer starts, second set, timer stops. Uh, and we've used this on the track. We've used this in the hockey rink for people skating, like blue line to blue line on the ice. So it's a precise way to measure sprint distance. We can also have this set up in our lab to where they measure the sprint distance. Uh, going from the human performance lab into the biomechanics lab, we can set up a 40 yard uh, sprint distance. And that brings us to the conclusion of our slideshow. Hope this gives you some information on how you can uh, utilize equipment, types of people, that we're going to be seeing in our lab. Hope you have a great semester.